Hi, everybody. I want to start with something that's making global news. This is a typhoon. I'm not sure if they're saying Maywar. That's what I'm going to go with. I apologize if that's not correct. Uh, this is a very strong typhoon, which, again, is a hurricane by different name when you get out into the um, eastern Pacific. So uh, that's what we're doing uh, right there with the storm. Um, here's, the, here's the island of Guam. Look how small it is. Here's the eye of this typhoon. Winds were 155 miles per hour sustained around the eye wall. That was this morning. Latest check late this afternoon, at least down a little bit to 144 miles per hour sustained. But the hurricane center projection is that this eye wall later tonight into tomorrow morning will move right about across the southern tip of island of Guam. It will produce uh, storm surges of 25 feet, which means all the flat areas around the island. Now, I'm not familiar with Guam at all. I'm not familiar with the topography of Guam at all. But anything that's 25 feet um, above the coastline there is going to get inundated with a wall of water coming in. And certainly the areas that were near this eye wall in the southern part of the island should brace for winds in excess of 100 miles per hour. So I'm sure people are doing the best they can to take cover, but this is going to be an amazing story if nobody loses their life. I mean, we keep our fingers crossed and we, we pray for them, but this is a serious situation. Again, Typhoon Maywar expected to move across the eye wall of this hurricane, or pardon me, Typhoon, across the southern tip of Guam later tonight into tomorrow morning. It is really, really very impressive on the satellite picture. You can see the structure the three dimension of the convective activity here in some of the outer bands. I mean, look at the definition um, being shown around the satellite image. Really, really impressive storm. I, I think I read it's going to be the strongest typhoon to threaten um, Guam in something like three decades or 35 plus years. So our, our thoughts are with those folks as they brace for that, uh, that storm. Okay, here at home, what's going on? Um, like yesterday, it took forever for parts of the valley to clear out and to start getting some sunshine. Uh, it's 5 o'clock now. This was about 4.30 from the uh, Portland Spirit Landing, the Tilcom Crossing in downtown Portland. Beautiful sunny day out in the gorge. This is Hood River and Indian Creek Golf Course. They were gorgeous. You can see Mount Hood right there. Beautiful weather. Had some sun uh, down around the uh, in Lincoln County along the Central Coast, but up around uh, Astoria and Gearhart and Seaside, the clouds have never cleared. That's the camera from Gearhart by the Sea Resort looking back at Tillamook Head. So this is a very similar day to the ones that we have had the last couple of days. And again, valley temperatures have held in the 60s. So at 430, these were the numbers. Portland 64, Salem 64, Vancouver 63. So let's assume that the highs are going to end up in the mid-40s, or excuse me, <laughs> mid-60s on average across our area this afternoon. We have been 66 out of PDX the last couple of days. Um, and today's is going to be pretty much in that same ballpark. I don't know why the screen grab came in a little fuzzy, but it did. This is a visible satellite picture. It does show you the clouds along the north coast, and then some clearing when you start getting near Portland and out to the west and certainly down to the south, more clouds up in the Kelso Long Beach area. You can see these impressive thunderstorms building out uh, in Idaho and especially over in parts of Montana. The uh, satellite imagery suggesting the, the heights of these thunderstorm clouds, the echo tops, tops we call them, um, running at about 35,000 feet high. It's maybe even a little bit higher than that in some cases. For the most part, the stormy weather has been uh, east of Oregon this afternoon. So it uh, kind of depends on where you are, kind of varying sky conditions. We've been talking about this guy, right? Here's the upper level low, which is basically the bullseye center of cool air. It's one of the reasons that we're seeing these below normal temperatures right now with a lot of clouds in the morning, clouds somewhat struggling to break up at least near the Columbia River, and then temperatures due to the lack of sun especially struggling to warm up out of the mid 60s. So here we are right here, and then here's the low right over basically the central part of Washington. Now the, the circulation around this low certainly brings in the marine air overnight into the morning hours, and we've seen that. Uh, the last couple of days. Some of the modeling still has this low over us tomorrow and then moves it out uh, or at least weakens it into Thursday and Friday. Other models kind of keep it overhead. I will tell you that um, I believe the days upcoming 
are trending cooler than what my seven day numbers have been showing. And I'll get to that in a moment. So we have that upper level low that, that weakens somewhat, but still over us tomorrow. Now, the indices we look at as forecasters show that tomorrow could be five degrees warmer. So maybe tomorrow does hit 70. But I think there's a good chance we'll see some morning clouds again. Now by Friday, see how there's still a trough over Nevada right here? See the blue colors? This is the, the five, uh, what? 82, 82, this is the 573 contour line right here, um, which is just kind of a typical height for us. The air is starting to warm up a little bit, so not warm, not cold. That's Thursday, and this is actually Friday. But then we go into the weekend, and things start to cool down. And by the time we get to Sunday, here's a trough that's redeveloping. See the, the X? That's an upper-level disturbance, what we call a... a um, a Vortmax, kind of a, a horizontal plane of cyclonic rotation. These little disturbances can fire off convection and fire off uh, bullseyes of precipitation. So with that coming through our area, it's not strong, but with it there on Sunday, it at least, at least presents the chance of some showers in the forecast. I would tell you weather modeling gives us basically nothing in terms of measurable rain. That doesn't mean the models are right. I'm going to tell you with this, Height of what 570, a little disturbance rolling through Sunday. I really feel like, especially in the afternoon, I at least have to tell you there's a chance for some scattered showers moving through. Temperatures will be cool, and if we start off with cloudy skies on Sunday, kind of what I've been telling you, we could be in the 60s. So I've been setting this up for a couple of days now in my messaging. The fact that um, the seven day could be way too warm. What you're seeing on your on your phones, and even what I've been showing you. So here are my latest seven day numbers. For tomorrow, I think there's a good chance uh, that we're going to have cloudiness in the morning, then become partly cloudy. All the indices we look at for forecast data suggest tomorrow should be 5 degrees warmer than today. Well, if today turns out to be 65, 66, tomorrow would be 70, 71. I've lowered the high to 73. I'm trying to cover 70. So we'll see. I think that's right kind of where we're going to be. Thursday, uh, we become increasingly unstable again. And because of that, right now there's a chance of a thunderstorm over the Cascades. Now, when I talked to you yesterday, I had a chance of thunderstorms over the Cascades tomorrow. That no longer exists. The modeling is really stabilized. But Thursday, and I may cancel this, but for now we'll go chance of an afternoon thunderstorm in the Cascades and maybe a spotty shower here in the valley, holding in the 70s. Mostly sunny, 80. I feel like certainly Friday has the best chance to be warm. I'm not positive we're going to get to 80. I almost didn't put it on the board. But some of the model guidance has been going 85, which I think is too warm. But about the time you discount those models, they burn you and they turn out to be more correct than you, than you think. So we'll look for this to at least be a couple of warmer days, Thursday and Friday. We'll see how warm we go. Saturday, west winds reinforce. So that's cooler marine air coming in off the Pacific. Could be morning clouds. I've got 75. But this could be a day that's 66, 67. Again, the model numbers are high, so I'm kind of I'm kind of gradually pulling things down. So we'll see. And then Sunday, remember I showed you that X, that little disturbance coming through with a chance of showers, 5270. Could be a day in the 60s with mostly cloudy skies very easily. Memorial Day, I've taken out the rain chance. I like this day a lot, 50 to 73. Assuming we get sun, I think we have a good chance to at least be 70, maybe 73. And then it looks like there's a couple of warmer days to follow after that. Tuesday right now, guys, mostly sunny and up to 77 degrees. So uh, what is today? Tuesday. I've been saying for several days that Wednesday would be the day that I'd really start to gather some confidence in what's going to happen over Memorial Day weekend. We're starting to see things come together. I still feel like when I talk to you tomorrow, some of these numbers are going to be lower okay, um, than, than what I have. So we'll see. I'll uh, look forward to giving you that update tomorrow. And and pay attention to the reports out of Guam. Should be a lot of worldwide, worldwide news coverage on that typhoon um, tomorrow with the island uh, being hit, or at least a very near miss, best case uh, scenario for our friends on the island of Guam. But boy, that imagery of that typhoon is really something I think you'll agree. All right, I will talk to you soon. Have yourself a great Wednesday.